what is going on you guys welcome back to another video and to the channel as you guys can see I have my new F80 M3 behind me here and wow does this thing look so good in this lighting right now that color just looks fire like absolutely <laughs> insane man this thing I, st I still can't believe that this is my car so it's still I'm still struggling to just, you know, accept this as my new car because I know I just didn't imagine that I would have this car uh, at this age. I honestly feel like someone's playing a joke on me, like this is just so unbelievable. But anyway, enough of that. So as promised for this video, I'm going to be doing a full overview of my new F80 M3. So I wanted to go over three main topics for this overview regarding the car. So the first one are obviously the specs and options that the car has. The second one is just the overall condition of the car and what's been done to keep it clean and taken care of. And then the third topic is gonna be just the future plans that I have for this car. So to start off with the basics here, this is a 2018 BMW F80 M3 with about 19,000 miles on it. It comes with the competition package, the executive package, and the driver assistance package. And then probably the most eye-catching thing about this car is its color. This color is called Avis Blue Metallic, and it is an individual color. So I guess this is sort of a custom color that the very first owner requested when they ordered this car uh, brand new. But yeah, guys, this, this color is easily my most favorite thing about this car, and I'm sure you guys would agree with that. Um, I specifically wanted a very, you know, vibrant, colorful color uh, to, you know, go with the E90. The Barbera Red Metallic on my E90 looks so good, and I wanted to make sure I got this car in a color that could kind of match and stand up to how good that color looks on that car. And I think I outdid myself with uh, that requirement because this car just looks so good in this blue. So yeah, to start off with the exterior here, you guys can see it comes with the 666M competition wheels, which come with the competition package. It also comes with these insanely aggressive LED adaptive icon headlights that I believe come with the executive package. But yeah, these were another requirement that I that I wanted on my F80. I needed to have these headlights because these headlights just look insanely aggressive. Uh, I could not get an F80 with just these standard uh, LED headlights. It needed to have these. You guys can see also it comes with gloss black grills and other gloss black little trim pieces and accents. I believe those are included with the executive package also. You can see there the pillars are gloss black and then the trim around the doors. Um, and then you can see the antenna is also gloss black. You can also see this really cool carbon fiber roof which I believe comes with the competition package also. I'm not 100% sure, but that looks so good, especially in this lighting right now. You guys can really see that carbon fiber. And also it comes with the gloss black exhaust tips, which I believe are part of the competition package also. And you guys can see it has a Sia style spoiler, which didn't come on the car initially. Uh, the previous owner put this on the car and it is a genuine BMW Sia style spoiler. And then you guys can see also this F80 comes with the blue Brembo brake calibers. It does not come with the carbon ceramics which I really didn't need since like I don't you know race this car or anything it definitely has a cooler more aggressive look with those brake calibers but it isn't really necessary for me these are just fine so I think those are all of the main specs for the exterior so let's go ahead and take a look at the interior now so this F80 comes with the black merino leather and then you guys can see also it has the competition seats which come with the competition package they have these cool little holes here and then the sides here kind of hug like around your back so you don't move around as much when you're driving you know aggressively or you take it to the track and whatnot so yeah these seats are really cool and they're pretty comfortable surprisingly and then you guys can see also it has the seven speed dual clutch transmission gearbox and then you may have noticed that the steering wheel is not the original stock steering wheel it is uh, a different steering wheel because the previous owner got this genuine and performance steering wheel and then you also may have noticed the carbon fiber pieces around the gear shift knob and gear shift panel piece in addition to the alcantara carbon fiber e-brake handle 
and then the Alcantara armrest. The previous owner got all of those pieces and they are all genuine BMW. So yeah guys, this interior is pretty much perfect for me. I did want a black colored interior. I did not want red or white or any other color. I just wanted black uh, because yeah, the red looks cool. I had it on the F30, but the black just looks a lot cleaner and it's more neutral and it can go with any color like this one. I think this is a perfect color combo for the exterior and interior. So let's get inside the F80 here so I can show you guys some of the cool features, at least driving features. Let's go ahead and turn the car on real quick here. So this F80 did come with the wireless CarPlay feature from factory. So this isn't an aftermarket you know, system like I have in my E90 or the one I had in my F30. This is the factory iDrive uh, with Apple CarPlay integrated into it. The only thing about this one is that it doesn't have full screen CarPlay from factory, but I know you can code this to have full screen CarPlay, which I am definitely gonna do at some point soon here. So I did mention that this F80 came with the driver's assistance package. So it comes with all of these features down here that you can activate. So it has the lane departure warning there. If you start like drifting out of your lane, it has the frontal collision warning here. And then the, I believe this one is the lane collision warning. Like if you're changing lanes and there's a car there, it'll warn you. Um, this one does also come with the blind spot detection, as you can see right there. The little triangle will light up if there's a car in your blind spot. Another really cool feature that comes with this F80 is that it has the heads up display. Uh, so let me see if I can turn that on real quick here. I think I made it to turn on the car, so let's turn it on real quick here. Yeah, you guys can see it. I think you guys can see it right there. It says my door is open and then it says my speed. So yeah, that is definitely a really cool feature. Let's go and turn the car off again. You can see it says M3 right there. Looks so cool. Another cool feature that comes with the driver's assistance package is the 360 camera view when you put the car in reverse. You guys can see there, uh, it has a camera in the rear. Focus here. Camera in the rear, obviously, and then there's two cameras on the side to the front bumper. You guys can see there on the right side and then the left side. So it just makes it a little bit easier to see if you're gonna get too close to something or hit something if you're trying to park. And then it obviously has the front and rear sensors there. So it also comes with heated seats, as you guys can see there. And then also heated steering wheel, as you guys can see back there, that button. And then I believe everything else is just basically like standard stuff on like even the regular 3 Series models. You guys can see also the instrument cluster looks a little bit different than the regular 3 Series, 4 Series models. This one definitely looks a lot more sporty, more of like a race car type of instrument cluster. You also get the Harman Kardon sound system in here which sounds really good. Like, like this sound system is also in the F30, the Harman Kardon, however you say it. It is also in the F30, and it sounded pretty good in that one, but it sounds even better in this car. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a plus. And then one thing I almost forgot to mention are these M3 badges that are in the seats. And these do light up at night, so these are definitely a cool little feature here in the interior. Here's a look at the camera that's on the side of the front bumper here that allows for the 360 view. Uh, whenever you put the car in reverse like I mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago. So lastly here, let's go ahead and take a look at what is under the hood. So obviously we have the S55 twin turbocharged inline six engine and this engine performs like an absolute beast uh, so far from what I've noticed driving this car for the last week. Now I believe since this car has the competition package, the engine gets a little bump in horsepower, so this one has, I think, around 444 horsepower. The base model M3 comes with 425 horsepower. Not really sure if you could really feel that difference, but for me, this car feels insanely fast, and it honestly feels a little bit faster than when I had the F30 on stage 2 E30. If you remember, I got that car to about 400 wheel horsepower, so I want to say maybe like 420 horsepower at the crank. and 
that one feels pretty close to this car in terms of like power output and how it just feels, you know, accelerating. Now I would have to take it to a dyno obviously to get actual numbers, but I'm just basing it off how it feels. This definitely feels a little bit faster, a little bit more powerful than the F30 when it was on stage two E30. And I can't even imagine how this car will feel if I tune it on the same thing like stage two and then a little bit of E85, but we'll have to wait and see until we get to that point. So this car also comes with the adaptive suspension, I believe it's called, where you can adjust the stiffness of the suspension. Like in sport mode, I believe it's a little bit more stiff and then in comfort mode, it's a bit more softer. So yeah, that's another cool thing about this car. So yeah, I think that's everything for all of these specs and options and packages and all of the little features that this car has. So let's go ahead and move on to the next topic, which is the condition of this car. So overall, I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, this car is extremely clean. Like the paint finish is extremely glossy clean. There are zero swirls and scratches in the paint and that is because the entire car has been ceramic coated. So yeah, this thing is super clean and glossy and water just falls right off of it so it doesn't really get dirty. And then when it does, it is super easy to clean. It is just, it is just crazy how easy it is to clean this car uh, with ceramic coating. And not only that, but the previous owner pretty much covered the entire front end of the car in PPF. So the entire front bumper has PPF, the hood, both fenders, and then the mirror caps. And then he also put PPF all the way up till about here. Now he didn't put PPF on the carbon roof, but I do want to do that because if this thing is damaged, it's really expensive to fix so i'd rather just have it protected like the rest of the front end of the car and then he also put ppf along here up to this point right there down to here so yeah this car is very protected against you know rocks and road debris so this thing has like no rock chips no nothing the only area of the car that has some rock chips is the front windshield um, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Like there's nothing major. There's just some rock chips and scratches, but again, it's really not serious and there's no serious cracks or anything, obviously. Now, as far as like, you know, little scratches and dents and dings, there are very few of those. The previous owner showed me that there was one, I think probably the biggest one is right here on the, the side skirt here. If you guys can see it right there, the camera can focus right there. You guys can see that's probably the worst uh, little nick on this car out of the entire car now same thing for the interior the interior is super clean the seats still look brand new um, both the front and the rear the dash all of the carbon pieces all of the leather on the doors everything looks brand new there's no dirt except like obviously on the where you put your shoes and it gets dirty there obviously but Everywhere else, it is extremely clean and in really, really good condition. It pretty much just looks brand new. So yeah, guys, this, this thing is in immaculate condition. I mean, it only has 19,000 miles, so it really shouldn't have much going on in terms of wear and tear. Now, as far as like maintenance and reliability, again, this car only has 19,000 miles, so there shouldn't be anything or much at all for things that you know went wrong or are you know going wrong with the car mechanically the previous owner said this car has had zero issues uh, mechanically engine wise uh, the only issue he had was that the steering wheel would creak sometimes at low speeds but he said he was able to get that fixed and now it does not creak I have not noticed any creaking at low speeds so yeah there is pretty much nothing wrong with this car as there shouldn't be because like I said it only has 19,000 miles but hopefully it'll stay you know reliable for me so far my E90 and my F30 have been pretty reliable and from what I hear this car despite being you know an M car is still very reliable and people daily drive this car so uh, yeah I think that's everything for the overall condition of this car all right so moving on to the final topic here what are my plans for this car? Now, I'm honestly still debating on if I should go crazy on this car or just keep it, you know, a simple OEM Plus build like I've been doing with my E90 and my F30 because this car is just so perfect and, you know, precious. I don't want to, you know, ruin it by, you know, adding a bunch of aftermarket parts 
and then you know just altering the way it drives because this car literally drives perfect in its stock form like right now this car drives perfect i would not want to change how this car drives like handling wise and suspension wise it's comfortable when you want it to be comfortable and it's sporty and aggressive when you want it to be sporty and aggressive and obviously lowering it will remove some of that comfortability and performance and then in regards to tuning it uh, I really don't know if I really need to tune it because like I said this car already comes with about 440 horsepower from factory and to me it feels plenty fast you guys know me, I'm not trying to be the fastest car on the road. I don't like to race. I, I don't race. I don't really take it to the track though. I would like to take this car to the track because it seems like it's pretty much track ready, honestly. This car is super fun to drive around like corners and through, you know, windy roads and whatnot. But yeah, as far as like increasing the horsepower, I really don't know if it's necessary, but I would like to experiment obviously just to see you know how it feels how far i can take it you know with like a stage two tune and then i've always been hearing you know about if you tune the s55 you could potentially you know run into that crank cub issue where it spins um it seems like it's kind of overblown but at the same time it does seem like a potential issue if you do increase the power output uh significantly now as far as exterior mods i am definitely going to be doing you know carbon pieces i think i'm gonna go forged carbon on this car as well like how i did on the f30 you know the usual front lip side skirts diffuser spoiler uh and whatnot um i can add a hood you know get new wheels and then with the interior i do think i'm gonna get a new steering wheel i really like the design i had on the f30 the steering wheel i had on the f30 it looked super aggressive so i think i am going to get one for this car and then obviously this car already has a bunch of carbon pieces inside so i'll have to do a bit more research on you know what parts i can get for this car but i am going to be doing exterior mods to get this car looking you know more aggressive obviously this car already looks extremely aggressive as is right now which is pretty much why this has been my dream car for one it's a bmw and two I think this is the best looking car ever made. Now I know that's a bold controversial statement because there's so many cars out there, but I've seen most cars, I've looked into most cars. This is easily the best looking car ever made. Not just the best looking car BMW's ever made, the best looking car ever made. To me, this car is just perfectly balanced in its looks and how it performs its interior everything just looks perfect there's not a single thing i would change on this car well actually there is one thing that i would change and that is the exhaust sound <laughs> yes i know the s55 is not really the best sounding engine that's available that's been made um yeah the the, the exhaust on this car isn't the best especially at the higher rpms Go ahead and take a look at the rear here now honestly i do think this car does sound better than i thought it would sound now you know driving it myself at low rpms this car sounds super aggressive at low rpms it's just when you get to the higher rpms when you get to like 4,000 and above that's when it starts sounding not good and like it just sounds too raspy too farty and too much like a tin can especially when you shift gears into the higher rpms it just it just does not sound good but from what i've seen you could easily fix that with an equal length mid pipe so i will probably be doing that at some point to get rid of that now as far as like exhaust work that'll probably be the only thing i do besides like down pipes maybe i'm probably not going to take off the stock muffler because i really don't need this thing that loud really uh, it's already pretty loud as it is for me uh, I don't like my cars, you know, obnoxiously loud, so I am probably going to keep the stock muffler and just get, you know, an equal length mid pipe and some down pipes maybe. I'm pretty sure that'll be plenty loud. So yeah, that's my plan for the exhaust system and that is the only thing that I don't like about this car, unfortunately. For how good it looks, it doesn't sound the best. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about and go over with you guys about this car. This car is literally a dream come true. Like I. <laughs> I really cannot believe it still. So I went into searching for my F80 M3 with a few different requirements. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I needed a color that would stand out and be unique, uh, just like the Barbera Red Metallic on my E90. 
In addition, I wanted the Icon LED adaptive headlights. Uh, I wanted low mileage and I wanted a 2018 with black interior. And now that you guys can see, I have my F80. It satisfies every single one of those requirements. So this is literally my, my dream car, my near perfect dream car. All right, you guys, so I think that is everything that I wanted to go over in this overview. Uh, I think I mentioned all of the important major specs and features and things about the car um, as a little introduction here to my new F80 M3. I'm sure I missed a couple things. Feel free to comment down below if you want to add anything, what you guys think of the new build. I'm pretty sure you guys would like it, but let me know what you guys think. If you want to add anything about like some of the features I missed or anything, let it anything. Uh, feel free to enlighten me because there's still things I need to learn about this car. Even though it was my dream car, I didn't spend much time, you know, researching it since I was busy building my other cars that I had before this, my F30 and my E90 and working on my, my store. So um, now I'm going to start doing more research, obviously, but if you guys want to help me out here, feel free. I'm always open to, um, you know, new ideas, advice, um, anything, because, you know, I don't claim to be an expert on, you know, BMWs or anything. I'm still learning myself. Um, but I have gained a good amount of knowledge on both the E90 and the F30 and just BMWs in general. But again, I'm still not an expert, so uh, feel free to drop any knowledge you guys have. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, so with that, thank you guys for watching. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more content featuring the F30 and my E90. Uh, also, feel free to check out my website, inline6auto.com, if you're looking for any aftermarket upgrades for your E90 or F30 or any other BMW, check me out, inline6auto.com. I'll leave it linked in the description of this video. But uh, anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next video.